Live from Shadowmere Studios, it's the Talkie Box Podcast. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's Talkie Box. Probably Talkie Box. It's almost definitely Talkie Box. I'm almost certain that it is Talkie Box. Yeah. All over her face. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if that's what she's into. Yeah. <laughs> I'm your host Dave, and with me now we got Justin. Hey, and Jackie. Hi. And uh, that's it. That's it. That's the whole show. Good night, everybody. Good night, uh, everybody. <laughs> you were lovely. Yeah. No. Um. I'm gonna do something that we don't normally do on Talkie Box. I'm gonna talk about some sports. Whoa. And we don't we don't typically talk about sports because we don't know anything about sports. Right. I don't think I should be here for this. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's not totally sports related. Here, here's what's going on. All right. Uh, as of this, the taping of this show, the World Cup is going on, right? It is. Okay. Bright um, lights in Russia. So I was reading this article today, and uh, someone had done an interview with the coach from the South Korean team. Okay. And they said, hey, we noticed that during your practices and your, like, your warm-up games and stuff, that your players are wearing different numbers on their jerseys than they typically do in their normal uh, games. And he's like, yep. And they go, why? And he goes, because Westerners can't tell Asians apart. So what happened was the, the Swedish coach had rented an apartment that overlooked where, they were, where the South Koreans were practicing. And he like had a telescope and he's watching their games and you know he's you know go okay number thirteen and, and got definitely got to watch number forty two, and then uh, come time to play the game they're wearing different jerseys. <laughs> and the reasoning so being so forty two's over there sucking ass and he's just like whoa hey what? <laughs> I thought I thought forty two yeah. was better than this. So, yeah. <laughs> you gotta cover that guy, but what's happening? So, the so South, basically the, South the coach, coach is like mm-hmm. yeah they can't tell us apart so whatever yeah. That's kind of... So it screws up everybody's strategies yeah. against him. Mildly racist. But, I mean... Against his own race. It so <laughs> I mean, it's it's everybody else being racist, and he's just playing on it. Maybe he's born with it. Maybe he's Asian. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, I just thought that was a, a funny little sporty tidbit. Sports! Yeah. Sports ball. Sports ball. Anyway. Uh, E3 happened. Yeah. It uh, happened. Yeah. And it happened so hard, you guys. Right. Mm-hmm. Real hard. And we talked about, uh, we had speculations about E3. Mm-hmm. And uh, those videos came out probably after E3. And then this video coming out way, way after at, Well E3. after E3. Yeah. So, I mean, talking on some of our speculations, we, we speculated a lot about Fallout 76. Yep. And how it is a, a, an online multiplayer mm-hmm. Fallout, so we thought. Um, and as it turns out... It is an online multiplayer right. Fallout, as we thought. And from what I've yeah. seen, it looks kind of cool. Yeah, you know, honestly, at first, I was really nervous about it. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm a hardcore BGS Games fan, Bethesda Game Studios, for those of you who are unaware. Your <laughs> Elder Scrolls, your Fallout, you know, yeah. Skyrim, Oblivion, all of that stuff. Right. Huge fan of those games because I like that single player experience. Yeah. And when I found out it wasn't single player, they talk, they, they used some scary words when they were unveiling the game, Mm. that uh, made me nervous. Like the fact that there are going to be nuclear warheads on the map that people can use to destroy things. And I'm like, well, I don't want to get pawned pawned by some kid who's over there shooting off nuclear weapons. Turns out it's much more difficult to get the nuclear weapons. It's very end game sort of things. And more and more details are coming out about how your shit's basically always safe. Like, that's good. you can get screwed up pretty badly, but anything you've built can be repaired mm-hmm. or can be picked up and moved somewhere else, and you yeah. don't lose progress. And uh, the it's, more... It's not game over. It's, it's not game over. Yeah. Um, and the more videos I've watched on it, the more excited I am for it. Cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I went ahead and pre-ordered it so I can get in on that beta. Yeah. yeah. That beta, though. <laughs> <laughs> and I think S and M Brian is also going to be getting on the beta. So, yeah. uh, if and when we get access to that beta before the game drops, we'll definitely be sharing our findings. Absolutely. As long as Bethesda lets us. Yeah. You got it. <laughs> now you told me you're not a huge gamer so much. No, so all of that do, went over my head. But you I do really like, enjoy hmm. watching people play games. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a good quality it's to a, have. It's yeah. one of my favorites. You know. And one thing Jackie and I do a lot is we watch the Game Grumps, which is a fellow YouTube creator. Um, 
I say they're fellow YouTube creators, like we're on the same level as them. We are not. They are. <laughs> they are fantastic. far and above. They are making yeah. money. Yes. Off of YouTube. Yes. We uh -oh. are not. <laughs> we aspire. We try. <laughs> Maybe we just need to pick up some game controllers and see where that takes us. That could be. We've I've been thinking about, about that. I've, I've, yeah. I've been thinking about it more and more lately about mm. doing like a Twitch stream or something like yeah. that. Um, I think it'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, and I've, I've talked to. Uh, I'd love to be there for that. Yeah, Absolutely. I've talked to good friends of the show, Honor and Cooper, about uh, possibly getting on on some let's play kind of stuff. Yeah, and uh, and and streaming and. You know, it might happen in the near future for, for Talkie Box. So Now, I've yeah. been watching uh, some of these things called Nuzlocke videos. I don't know if you've heard of them. I I've think we, heard of them. Because I just mentioned it No, to no, you. no. I, I'd heard of them before because some of my friends no, who are... No, I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. Justin. Oh, was I supposed to fake it? <laughs> yes. Yeah, come on, Dave. I'm sorry. Son of a I, bitch. I'm the host well, of the show. Camera. I don't fake shit. Oh, no, yeah, you do. <laughs> okay, I do. Um, but basically, like, they take their own f set of rules mm -hmm. and they apply randomizers to specifically Pokemon games that I'm aware of, and basically adopt these different sets of rules as they go through these playthroughs on the Switch. Uh, I mean, on Twitch, rather. And mm -hmm. it looks really cool and interesting, and I wouldn't mind doing that. But I'm wondering if there are other forms of those kind of alternate rule gameplays right. that you can do. And I'm wondering what some of them are, and I'd love to give those a try. I know we've actually watched a couple, from, from again, from Game Grumps, where they, they you know you, you apply your own rules to a particular game. Um, I know there's one for Mario 64 where there's a couple levels where I think it's called the Green, the Green Demon, or something. Where it's basically uh, you set off a uh, a, a one up to come out, and they and a one up follows you throughout the, the the level until you actually collect it, and it's trying it's trying to get to you. And so in in a couple of these levels, you're supposed to to set off this one up to to start following you, and then collect all eight red coins in the level before it gets to you. And it's super fucking hard. Hmm. Um, that sounds like fun. Yeah. <laughs> sounds like a nice take. And yeah, then there's also uh, no touch games where uh, you play a level of something like like Super Mario Brothers, where and you try to get from the beginning to the end without hitting any enemies, without getting any coins, without breaking any blocks. Um, yeah. Now I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Oh God, it is wonderful to see how frustrated people get. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that would so, be interesting to see. But uh, I don't know of anything else quite like what you're talking about with like the Pokemon stuff. Because um, you did mention earlier before the show uh, about like how um, you go into an area and you you can only catch one Pokemon in that area and it's the first one that you come across. Yeah, you, you see the, the first more. Pokemon that you, you come across in any given route or area... Yeah. The first one you see is the only one you're allowed to catch. Yeah. And if you and don't that catch single, it, you don't, you don't get, get one for that you don't, area. You don't get to catch one. Yeah. So, and they, they use uh, randomizer programs on there so that the pool that a particular area would normally have of Pokemon mm -hmm. you could pull from are completely different and randomized out of 800 some odd characters. Right. So where you would be getting, like, a Bulbasaur, you end up getting... Like, anything. Like, an Electabuzz. Okay. And the Electabuzz will be dragon type, and it'll have Stun Spore and Hydro Pump. Like okay, so it it doesn't just randomize like the the Pokemon it randomizes what it randomizes their about type, the Pokemon. randomizes their move sets. Okay, like everything's random. It, it it's been pretty interesting to watch so far. I'm about mm. six episodes into this one playthrough, um, and it's really interesting to see like what his party is at this yeah. point in the game. Versus somebody like my, myself who has played through this game a few times, like I know what it's possible to have at that right. point in the game, and none of it's possible. So it's just it's interesting to watch. It's a fun now, thing. From my time playing Pokemon, I remember there were certain parts in the game where like you couldn't progress unless you had a Pokemon with a certain type of move, like Cut mm -hmm. or something like that. So what happens if you're playing this and you don't get one that has that? Then you're pretty much stuck. Yeah, yeah, that blows. It's it's very unforgiving. Another thing that they do is like if any of your uh, party faint, mm -hmm. you have to put it in the box and you're never allowed to use it again. It's oh, wow. dead. Oh <laughs> like if any of them faint for any reason, yeah. you're not allowed to use that guy anymore. So you you just have to get a, another one to fill up space, and that's yep. it. That guy's actually dead. He's dead. Oh wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
I do like that you said that uh, you have to nickname everyone that you catch. Because <laughs> yeah, that was you pretty You have to be really creative. Like, I can just imagine myself doing like, oh, okay, this one's fart. Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the, the, the guy I'm watching, he's naming them like Trooper and Sport and stuff like that. Like, he's <laughs> he's getting uh, very generic with it, which I think is fine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But there's been a few where he's gotten like tripped up. He's like, oh, fuck fuck, what am I going to name this guy? <laughs> what did I name him instead of my other playthroughs? What have I named him as? And like going through and looking right. through old posts to figure out what he wants to name this thing. Like, dude, it, too, it doesn't too matter. Thought. Yeah, It doesn't it's, it's, matter. You're going to call it what it is anyway. You can just name it Aardvark or something. Like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> like, oh my God, just start naming it after animals it looks like. like. Or not. Just, yeah. just, just go down the alphabet. Like fart. Yeah. Yeah. But no, I mean, it, they, they've been entertaining to watch. Yeah. Um, but I'm really interested in doing some of those Twitch streams at some point, the Let's yeah. Plays and whatnot. Um, but going back to E3, mm. tons of announcements. There's one that I heard about that I I liked and I probably I, I hope to get a chance to play it at some point. But the newest Smash Brothers, yes, which is supposed to have every character that's ever been in Smash Brothers. Every character that's ever been in Smash Brothers will be in Smash Brothers Ultimate. Yeah. And you can rest assured, Dave, you will get a chance to play it. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. You're going to make me play it? Well, I'm going to have it. Oh, and okay. I'll also have a Switch, and I'll probably bring it over at some point, and All you'll right, play cool. it with me. Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> um, what's really cool that they're doing about that is they're actually re-releasing GameCube controllers yeah. to plug Ooh. into your Switch okay. yes. to play it with a GameCube controller. That, that's and they what have I originally a multi-port. played it on. Well, I originally played it on the 64, but... Right. Back in the day. Back in the day. But now they also have like a... Like a four part ad- like adapter where you plug it in, you can hook up four GameCube controllers nice. and play four players. The game looks now, insane. Uh, I haven't played a Smash Brothers game I think since yeah, it's been a while. Yeah. But Melee on the can, GameCube. Can you can you just bring your own game GameCube controller, or you have to get one of these new ones that come? I'm out? not sure. I, okay. I want to look into it a little bit more because the Nintendo Switch uses a USB C. Mm. Um, and the uh, old school GameCube controls obviously were not that. Right. I mean, um, all they need is an adapter, though. Right. Really, but I don't know what will be out there for that. I don't know if it'll be specific like Nintendo Switch mm-hmm. GameCube controllers. Okay. Um, but I know that it's a thing. Yeah, okay. because I mean, if they want to make money, they're going to make new ones, especially. I'm for sure this. they will make new ones, but I would hope they would also make it if you already have one. Go for it. Well, I mean, that's what people were hoping with the iPhone, but. That little thingy, you gotta put an adapter piece, then you put the headphones in. Dongles! Yeah. all of this. Yeah. Dongles. All mm. dongles. But no, that game looks a lot of fun. Another one that's coming out for the Switch, a good multiplayer game, is the new Mario Party. Okay, yeah. The Mario Party for Switch. Looks bonkers. Is that gonna have Waluigi in it? Waluigi, yeah, probably. Okay. I would assume is so. Is that who you like the best? I do like Waluigi, actually, but apparently and he's not He is in not in Smash, Smash Brothers, Brothers, because he never was in Smash right. Brothers. Um, but there's been a lot of memes going on about, you know, everybody's here! And then there's just, like, a sad Waluigi <laughs> sitting in a corner or something. <laughs> but, they, they, like, I, I watched a, a video where they showed, like, everybody that's in the new Smash Brothers. And, I, and I, like, there's a lot that I forgot that were in it. I think the roster um, is something at, like, 68. A bunch. It's now, like obviously, bunch. they're not all unlocked as soon as you right. play. Of course not. But they're saying, like, they've tried to set it up in a way that... It'll you're always you're you're constantly unlocking characters, so you always feel like you're making progress right. by unlocking characters. I know there's like three different links in there. Mm-hmm. There's Toon then, Link, Young Link, and, and Link, Link and regular old yeah. Link. And then uh, Zelda and Sheik are two different characters. Mm-hmm. And the Pokemon. In fact, from what it looked like, it wasn't the Pokemon trainer. It was the three Pokemon. The, well, that, that that's the way. It would, like you choose the Pokemon trainer, mm-hmm. and then basically you get to like he's. Almost a cheat character because you can play three different characters yeah. with him. Like you choose him, and then you can choose to send out, I think, Charizard and Ivysaur and and Squirtle. Bul- and, and Squirtle. Yeah, um, and you can swap them out at any time. Right. But it like I watched some playthroughs. Um, it looked like a lot of fun. Yeah. A lot, a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, watched a playthrough for um, the new Pokemon Let's Go games. Mm-hmm. Revealed a whole bunch of cool new features. Um, very Go integrated, very integrated into Pokemon Go, but right. um, still looks like it's going to be fun. Oh, explain um, the, how is it integrated into Pokemon Go? Well, uh, you can transfer Pokemon from Pokemon Go into Pokemon Let's Go, what? and uh, where the Safari Zone used to be, 
in red and blue and fire red and leaf green is now replaced by the Go Park, where you can go and catch the Pokemon that you've transferred over from Go. Mm. And another thing that they've said to encourage you to transfer like duplicate Pokemon over is whenever you transfer Pokemon over, you get candy in return. Okay, so now I need to get this. Is basically what I'm hearing. <laughs> you want that candy? Yeah, because yeah. yeah. you get you get candies in return. Um, the Pokemon are in the overworld, and if it has a blue aura, it's small, and if it has a red aura, it's big, and Pokemon have varying sizes. Yeah, we have okay. like that. Um, now, actually, let me ask you. So if you switch from, if you transfer from your Go into Let's Go, is the, is the Pokemon still in Go? No. Oh. No, you lose it forever. Uh -huh. and you can't transfer it back. What? That's why oh. you transfer, like, all the duplicates. Mm -hmm. You also found out that you actually level oh, okay. up your party by catching Pokemon, so the more Pokemon you catch and duplicates just like in Go, mm. you get boosts. Okay. Um, I mean, it makes sense gorgeous. to get candy for transferring a duplicate, because normally that's what would happen in Pokemon Go anyways, is you would transfer that over and you would get a candy for it, but now you get to still keep it. That's pretty cool. Yeah, you, you, you just keep it in a different yeah. game. Yeah. A game that you can actually play through with actual battles instead of those stupid Pokemon Go battles, because those are really good battles. No. I haven't seen any battles in Pokemon Go. All I've seen they're, is like where it's like, here's the thing, try to catch it. No, they're, uh, they're, the they, they have crappy battles. battles. Yeah, oh. there's a reason I don't do them. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> they, they, they have crappy battles. Mm. Uh, so, but it just encourages you to catch as many Pokemon as you can. Right. You saw like wild Bulbasaurs in Viridian Forest, so you can catch starter Pokemon. Okay. Um, it looks like a real blast. Okay. Uh, very nice updated graphics. Oof. But I felt like Watching it just from my perspective, because of the games that I like to play, mm. um, this really feels like a holdover year, and it feels like next year is going to be one of the most insane years in gaming. Could be. Whoa. When is Let's Go coming out? <laughs> Let's Go's coming out in November. Okay, and then uh, seventy six is coming out in November. So, right, so seventy six comes out on the fourteenth. Mm. Pokemon Let's Go comes out on the sixteenth, and my anniversary is the twentieth. <laughs> All right. We all needed to know, for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Speaking of games, Justin and I were on another show. We sure were. Yeah, what? we went, uh, yeah. We went and hung Cheating out with... Cheating on uh, Talkie Box? No. No, sh she knew about it. She approved. <laughs> Talkie Box is a wily mistress. Yeah. I did not know this. Tell me no, more. No, we went... Uh, She's very open-minded. There's, mm -hmm. there's another podcast called 8-Bit Bros. Um, really cool guys. Three guys from Jersey. Sounds like it. I feel like it was Jersey. I might be wrong North if I am. South. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, bro. Sorry, bros. I should have looked it up before I got on the show. Didn't. Nope. Um, but, uh... We're real good Yeah, well, on there we taught video games for a while. Yeah, we did. And, uh, had a good time. And they... But they did kind of, uh, make fun of Justin for liking Pokemon. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. I don't care. I mean, you told them that. I, I sure did. Yeah. <laughs> Why did they make fun of you? What, what uh, because did they have to the, say? I mean, the, 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 they are uh, a little it, bit older yeah, than I am. There's guys. a bit of a generation gap. Yeah. Ah. So uh, when Dave said XCOM, um, their pants got wet. <laughs> uh, when I said Pokemon, they all kind their of pants know, shook, shook their head and like, oh, Pokemon. Like, yeah. uh, but that's fine. You know, I think like yeah. my opinion is everybody is allowed to like the games that they like. Of course. Um, I like the games that I like. Yeah. That's yeah. why you told them that. Yeah. <laughs> That exactly? But no, we, yeah. had, we had a good time. You can check out the Ape Bros on Facebook and YouTube and Twitch and a bunch of other places, actually. Just uh, Google it. Google. Yeah. We, we, we'll probably put links in, oh, in the right. description of this. Hopefully. I mean, yeah. we don't even know where they are. Maybe Jersey. We'll think about it. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> um, some other big games coming out. Have you heard about this Cyberpunk 2077? Yeah. Hmm. That's actually based on a tabletop game. Yeah. Called um, Cyberpunk twenty, I don't know twenty five or like twenty twenty two, but all I've seen is like some some cinematics from it. No actual gameplay, so I have no idea what it is, like how it's supposed to play now, out at all. Now, once again, I I haven't seen any gameplay footage either. I'm just basing off of what the interwebs has told me, mm -hmm. um, and from what I've gathered, uh, some words that I've heard associated with it are. Uh, First-person shooter, okay. Uh -huh. RPG, mm -hmm. um, sandbox, okay, with vehicles. So like a Fallout Cyber Edition. Like a Fallout Cyber Edition meets Grand Theft Auto Five. All right. 
That's that's so far, what I'm sounds getting. Pretty great. Mm-hmm. Like if it's first person shooter style mm-hmm. RPG, but yet I can get in a car and drive around this super cool futuristic city and fight robots. Yeah, I'm totally down robots for, and mutants. And I like whatever. robots. Yeah, I'm killing robots. <laughs> um, but no, it, it looks insanely good. Yeah. Um, there's still no official release date for this. Is a game that was yeah, announced like five years ago. Yeah, that's one that's probably not gonna be out for at least a couple of years. Uh, well, my understanding is now that they are aiming for June of 2019. Oh, wow. Okay. Is when they are aiming for it. Uh, which, if is true, will be a huge game coming out next year. Mm-hmm. Uh, another game that many are speculating will come out next year, though there's no news on it. There's literally no news on this game, is Starfield. Right. Starfield, Starfield, Another, another Starfield. Bethesda game. Another Bethesda game. Space. Yeah, uh, I watched... The Making of Fallout 76, which was a follow-up documentary to the history of Bethesda Game Studios, uh, by Noclip on YouTube, which is an entirely crowdfunded video game documentary series. Okay. Um, and uh, towards the end of The Making of Fallout 76, which gives you a ton of information on the game, and if you're at all nervous about it, watch the documentary. You will feel a lot more at ease about getting this game. I want to get as many people on this game as possible because it looks like it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Um, but towards the end of uh, the documentary, Todd Howard, the director of Bethesda Game Studios, was talking a little bit about Starfield and how uh, on stage he referred to it as next generation. And there was you know, a question like, does that mean a new console? Does that mean a new animation system? Like, what do you mean by next generation? And what he said was, we'll see. Ooh, um, God dang it. <laughs> basically, he's, he's saying like, um, if they're basically making the game that they want to make right now, mm. um, and when the game is done, they're going to see what options they have in terms of release. Right. And if it's going to require a new console in order to be played, then that's what it's going to be aimed for. Uh, there's already been talk about the new Xbox coming out in 2020. There's no word on already? a new PlayStation. Well, you say already, but the Xbox One came out in 2013, and 2014. I still don't have it. No, it sounds like a you problem. <laughs> it that is might a me be problem. Something uh, to just hold off on, and just wait for them. And, and, and I, I, I've, like. I've actually made the decision myself that if it turns out that Starfield is going to be released on a next generation console, I'll probably buy the next generation Xbox mm-hmm. just so I'll have early air access to mods. Than I did on the PlayStation 4 with Skyrim and Fallout 4. Right. Because um, the mods are really cool, mm-hmm. but you're very limited on PlayStation 4, Xbox. You have much more freedom with mods. Um, but I will definitely buy a new console for Starfield. Uh, they also announced Elder Scrolls 6. Yeah. Which um, I understood, and I don't understand at the same time as to why they would announce that game. On the one hand, I know a lot of people have been clamoring for it. Mm-hmm. A lot of people want the next Elder Scrolls game, yeah. and they just want to know when it's going to be there. And they've just been waiting for bated breath. So they're like, all right, guys, we are working on Elder Scrolls Six. The reason I don't like it is I don't want my favorite game studio to get caught in the most frustrating thing in game announcements, and that is we're going to announce a game, and then you're not going to hear about it for years right. <laughs> until it's ready. Uh, and I think that's what's going to happen with Elder Scrolls Six. We got the announcement in June 2018. Mm. I don't think we're going to get that game until at least November 2022. No. Oh wow! Dang. I mean, maybe how long did it take for from the announcement of Skyrim till Skyrim? Uh, from the announcement of Skyrim till Skyrim was about like six months. Okay. Um, same thing with Fallout Four. Right. It was a very short turnaround. Uh, but this is one of the few times where they've kind of like broken with tradition. Mm. And made announcements for games that they don't even have a release date for. Right. Normally, if they announce a game, they give you a release date at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, and this time, it doesn't look like it. Okay. Um, Starfield come out could come out next year. It could come out in 2020. There's yeah. no telling, um, which is why I'm kind of a little apprehensive. They decided to go ahead and make all these announcements because See, now I'm just going to be waiting. What I I'm just hoping wanted for. to blow your mind for mm-hmm. just one quick second. Yeah, oh, and it did. What mm-hmm. I'm hoping for is that is that they have a Starfield team mm-hmm. and a Fallout team mm-hmm. and an Elder Scrolls team. Well, they do have and three then, different studios. Yeah, so, uh, Montreal, Austin, and Maryland. All right. Um, I want to say what they said in the documentary is that once Fallout 76 releases, mm-hmm. 
that Austin, the Austin team will be um, working on Fallout 76 from there on out for, you know, incremental updates and DLCs and stuff mm -hmm. like that and just basic game support. And that uh, the other two teams are going to move on to Starfield. Okay. Hmm. Both of them? Both of them. Oh. So that means Elder Scrolls. Elder Scrolls is not coming out for years. Yeah. Hmm. Like multiple years. Yeah. I'm going to say at least three. Okay. I, I make my prediction now that we will not see Elder Scrolls 6 until at the earliest late 2021. Okay. You heard it here first. Late 2021. <laughs> This is at the, the earliest, <laughs> yeah, more than likely, I'm I'm expecting a, a holiday release next year for Starfield, mm -hmm. um, and then if we get Starfield next year, we could get Elder Scrolls 2021, but if we don't get Starfield until 2020, we won't get Elder Scrolls until 22 or 23. Oh man, mm -hmm. that's a wait. That is it a is wait. a wait. Yeah, which is why it's like, oh man, you announced it, and we didn't even get like. The title to it, you know, we didn't like yeah, Elder just, Scrolls 4 Elder Scrolls Oblivion, 6. Elder Scrolls 5 Skyrim, Elder Scrolls 6. <laughs> <laughs> Figure it out. All right. It looked like High Rock, but who knows? High Rock? High Rock. It's That's... one of the other provinces oh, okay. of Tamriel. All right. Come on, get on your lore, bro. Look, man, I played Oblivion and I played Skyrim. Yeah, that's, that's all you needed to know that. I didn't play any of the other Fallout. Ne or, uh, Ooh, Elder Scrolls, we're not even on Neither did I. And I company. still knew it. Do you even read the books in game? God. Not really. Why not? I got shit to do, man. Man, that's like the immersive part of it. You get so much backstory that Some way. Some of the books I actually did read. Yeah. But uh, I tried to read. There's admit, so many damn books. There's a lot of books. Fucking games. And, and it, what's funny is, is Skyrim actually repeated a lot of the books from Oblivion. Like. Oh, really? oh, there was a ton of game uh, books from Oblivion that were in Skyrim that were the exact same, mm. which was cool in my eyes because it was like 150, 200 years in the future from that game, mm. but it's it just saves them a lot of that world building that yeah. makes those games take forever. Because I think with a lot of those games, it's not a matter of you know figuring what the story will be or get, making the game and the sp and the models and all that other stuff work. Mm. I think the majority of those games is like, all right, we're going to put a rock here, <laughs> and then we'll make this a bigger hill, cave here, all right, now we're going to build the cave. Yeah. Like, they build their entire maps, That's and true. that shit takes forever. I think they said that Skyrim's map took something like two years for them yeah. to actually build and, out Skyrim's map. And given that it was like two maps, because you can go underneath Skyrim, mm -hmm. and there's so much stuff under there... Which I've never, I've never done. Have you not? Out of all of the times and iterations I have played Skyrim, I've never once gotten to that below Skyrim. How? I don't know. I don't even know where to begin to get to it. Like there's, there's a bunch of entrances. Yep, never been. In fact, I went in one time and got lost, and I was like, I don't know how to get out of here. <laughs> Starting the game. <laughs> <laughs> this character died in the caves, and uh, a new character, uh, Jimmy Two. Came up in his place. Jimmy Two. Yeah. Good old Jimmy Two. Yeah. Did do you when you play uh when you play Elder Scrolls, mm -hmm. do you do you switch up different races and stuff? Or you just like you pick one you're that's it? I typically switch up different races, though I have a few that I cycle through. Yeah. I don't think I've ever played as a high elf. Mm. Not ever. Um I like playing as Khajiits. I only play as Khajiit. Night Eye and Claw, man. Early yeah. early on in game, that Kajits. is huge. Khajiits are the, the cat people. Cat people. Oh, then yeah. 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 That makes you, get, sense. <laughs> you get high damage claws, and you can see in the dark right away. It's a yeah. huge advantage in the game. <sighs> um, I like Nords. Mm. I like um, the what Dark are, Elves. What are the reptilian people called? Argonians. Uh, Argonians. Those are cool because they can breathe underwater. They can breathe underwater. They're just making um, up names. And then uh, mm. Bretons. I like Bretons for the... Battle mage style, where no, spells and swords. <laughs> I didn't care about any of the humans, like any of the humanish things. It was all all Khajiit all the time. All Khajiit all the time. That's because if I've never played as an orc. You could, mm -hmm. you would be a cow person, Dave. I probably would. I yeah. sense that about you. You're very aloof. And every time I make one, I, I make them with like dark fur with like gray tints to it. Yep. Mm -hmm. See? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I always do the same thing. I always try and go for like a, a reverse tiger look, though. I always try and go like super dark fur, like mm -hmm. black fur, and then get like the white tiger face paint on it. Okay. 
Like, like, like a black tiger. Racist. Right, wait. <laughs> he's being inclusive here. I don't know how he's the one being racist. Well, he's yeah. the one who said it. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. What else? What else? Uh, E three. Oh, what else? E three. Those are the, the three big game or the four big games I remember is is, is obviously the uh, Smash Brothers, um, seventy six, mm -hmm. and mentioning of Starfield and Pokemon Let's Go. Yeah. Um, I know there were others, but I can't think of any. Oh, other. absolutely. Uh, Red Dead Redemption two. Yeah. Which is a Rockstar game, so it's Old West sequel to the. Uh, Red Dead Redemption, kind of in a Grand Theft Auto right. style. Which was, in itself, a, a sequel to Red Dead Revolver. Yep. Um, um, let's see here. Uh, the Last of Us 2 mm -hmm. was yeah. announced. Um, I think Gears of War 6. Uh, I can't Rage... believe they're still making Gears of War. Yeah. <laughs> Rage 2, okay. another one out of Bethesda, but not Bethesda Game Studios. Mm -hmm. It does look intense. Yeah. It looks like a, a real, like... Mind fuck of a game, shooter open yeah. world. Because Rage was essentially uh, Borderlands, mm -hmm. uh, but not as funny. Yeah, because I've got I've got both of those, and they're essentially the same game. Just one of them's funnier than the other one. Mm. Um, couldn't tell you about Rage Two and, and whether or not it's going to be funny, mm. um, but it looks hot pink, and neon is all get out. Okay. A lot, of, a lot of bright colors. Oh, then yes, maybe I actually do know about this one. Because I feel like I, I saw a game that was coming out that was, like, very bright. Mm -hmm. Very bright pink. The, 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 the mascot is, like, a chick with, like, a pink yes. mohawk and, yep. like, a skull painted on her face. I know exactly okay. what you're talking about now. Mm -hmm. um, they, they, they have announced a whole bunch of, like, uh, ports coming out. So Fortnite came onto the Switch. Mm-hmm. Um, Fallout Shelter came to the Switch and to the PlayStation 4. Actually, something else I wanted to ask you about was 76. Yeah. Do we know, or any of these games, do we know if they're going to start doing cross-platform? Uh, nothing was actually mentioned about cross-platform um, in the documentary. Mm -hmm. mm. I think uh, uh, most of these platforms have become open to cross-platform play, yeah. with the exception of PlayStation. Um, so my understanding is, is if you're playing on Xbox or if you're playing on PC mm. with 76, there should be no issue whatsoever right. in that cross-platform play. I don't know what Sony's going to do and whether or not they're going to let me play with people who are playing on PC or mm. Xbox. I sure wish that they would. Yeah. Um, but the way that Todd Howard explained it is it sounds like they have their own, like, their own dedicated platform and their own dedicated shit. Right. For all of this ha stuff to take place, um, twenty-four to <clears throat> thirty-two people on a server uh, for one overworld. Yeah, um, doesn't sound that great. Actually, it sounds like for thirty-two. It's thirty-two people, twenty-four to thirty-two people on a map four times the size of Fallout Four. So hmm. that's actually pretty awesome. Is that because yeah. I have no idea? Yeah, with with <laughs> games like. With games that are strictly, like, kill everybody else, uh, it's fine to have, like, 64, 100 different people playing mm -hmm. because, you know, you're trying to find all the people and kill them all. But with a game like this where it's about building stuff and it's about exploring and, and, and okay all that stuff, you don't want to, you want to have a little bit of interaction, but you don't want to have a shit ton of interaction. But they, they, they have talked about, you know, like, people are able to become vendors. Like, mm -hmm. you can craft things and become really good at crafting specific things and then turn around and sell those things. Like, if yeah. you cook a really good whatever mm -hmm. that has good buffs, you can turn around and just sell all the extra yeah. ones that you Ooh. have. And, like, there have been people online who are already talking about, like, uh, me and my friend are just going to set up a mart. Like, we're yeah. going to go out and scavenge, yeah. craft, and sell. That's just going like, to be our whole gambit. It seems the, the ideal here is to create a community in the game. Yes. And not not try to fight each other so much as, like, let's work together to make this game exactly what it, what, but, according to the story, should be exactly what it is. But you, you don't get a dedicated server either, so you're, you're not always going to load in to the same server. Oh, really? Oh. But you can make friends with people, yeah. and as you make friends... When you start up the game and you see they're playing, you can just go ahead and 
jump, jump to, to their, their server. Okay. Jump to the server that they're on, and people can do the same thing for you. So if yeah. you have a friend group that you want to follow... Just, like, I'll text each other, like, hey, we're going to do this right now. Yeah, like, all right, well, I'll just go ahead and jump on that server that you're on. So how does that work? If it's a game of building things... How do you? How does that work? If you jump into a different server, is your stuff still going to be built? So yes, they they have a new thing called the camp. I don't remember exactly what it stands for, um, but it's basically a portable workshop. Mm -hmm. You can build things up. Your things can be destroyed. Mm -hmm. If they get destroyed, you can just repair it. You can just go and like use low cost items to repair it. Or you can pick up and move your camp at any point, and it just turns into a blueprint. Mm -hmm. And you can go and set it down somewhere else using the blueprint. Mm -hmm. If you look, if you have your your place in a specific spot on the map, when you load into a server, it doesn't matter which server, which map you're going on, mm -hmm. your camp will be in the same space. Okay. Unless somebody else already has a camp there, in which case, whoop, turns into a blueprint and you can put somewhere else. Okay. All right. So that makes more sense. I was wondering how that would work if you if you pop in and someone is already where you were popping into. How does that affect like where your camp? Your, stuff your, is your camp is just like with you, and okay. you just have to put You're your camp somewhere a else. Nomad at yeah, this point. all right, okay. nomadic. That's pretty cool. A lot of cool new creatures. Yeah. Um, I'm telling you, if you haven't watched the, I've seen the, a little bit about it, and it, it's I know. It, it, first off, it takes place way before any of the other games. It does. It takes and place 25 years after the bombs drop, and at some point, aren't, I I did hear something about how. At some point, they're going to explain how Elder Scrolls and Fallout are in the same universe. I think that's a lot of, like, fan conjecture. Yeah. Because nobody out of the studio, at least, that I've heard mm -hmm. has said anything about them being in the same universe. Okay. I think there's a, just a lot of, like, Easter eggs and throwbacks and little nods in the okay. games. Um, but I, I don't think that we're, we're going to see that integration. Okay. And if we ever do... Maybe it'll happen in Starfield. Okay. Um, you know, futuristic space mm -hmm. planets, ultimate sci-fi. Todd Howard has described the game as he wanted to make it as the most epic, um, the most epic, ambitious sci-fi game ever made. So we'll see what that looks like. I, I want to get as many details as I can. I look up to see if there's been any leaks mm -hmm. on Reddit or 4chan on like a nearly daily basis um, because that's where the leaks happen, yeah. apparently. <laughs> um, it happened with Fallout 76 mm -hmm. on Reddit. Fallout. It happened with uh, Pokemon Let's Go on Reddit and 4chan. So leaks get out there, and those little blog sites are the places that people put them. Right. It's very interesting stuff. A lot of, lot of big games coming out. Yeah. In the next several months and years. Yeah. You know, I can't think of many big movies coming out. Not really. I um, think the next big than, one... I mean, obviously we know about the Marvel movies and stuff like that. Yeah. We, are, we yeah. talk about that all the time. Yeah. I, did, I did read an article recently about uh, the Aquaman movie coming out. And from what I've read about it, it's going to be awesome. Oh, really? Like, the guy who is directing it uh, also did... Some of the Fast and Furious movies and some other things. Okay. And apparently his plan for it was he made a fantasy movie instead of a superhero movie. And I think that could work very well for Aquaman. I think I think that Yeah. yeah. Because he's gonna be underwater in Atlantis. Yeah. yeah. I mean I think it makes more sense um just from like a more meta standpoint. Mm. Um not a lot of the DC movies have really been working out the way that they want them to, with the exception of Wonder Woman. Right. Mm -hmm. And Wonder Woman, I feel like, did as well as it did because it kind of bent the genre, the genre a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's like, it's not just going to be a straight-up superhero movie. We're going to incorporate some other elements and genres in there. Yeah. Um, and it, it just Which, did phenomenally, I thought. And nothing against the Wonder Woman movie because I, I thought it was amazing. But it did. I, I felt like it kind of pulled from the Captain America movie, the very first Captain America. It movie. did pull a little bit and from that. Yeah, it's just like here's the superhero in World War One instead of World War Two. Um, but they did a, a great job with it. Yep. It was amazing. I feel like the the CGI in the final boss fight could have been better. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, it was great storytelling, great acting, great movie. Um, doing something like that Still for Aquaman. Seen it. Really? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's good. Cool. Um, we should watch that tonight. 
Yeah, if we can find it. You can find it, I believe, in you guys. All right. Um, I'll go dig in the backyard. <laughs> I, st I still haven't seen Justice <laughs> exactly. League. Exactly. I haven't either. Yeah. Um, honestly, from what I've heard about I it. I refuse to see I, it. Yeah. It's not that I refuse to see it. Like, if it comes on, I'll watch it. Just like it was, I felt okay, the same yeah. way about no, um, Batman versus Superman or like whatever it was called. Like, I'm not going to pay for it, is what I mean. Like, yeah. No, no, I, no. I might red box it. I'll give them a dollar. Um, cause if, I, I want to see. It. I want to know if it shows up did. on Netflix or HBO now. Yeah, I'll watch it. Um, but it was the same way with Batman versus Superman. Like, I loved Man of Steel. Like, people gave it a whole bunch of shit. I liked Man no, of Steel. I actually did like Man of Steel. Um, so Batman versus Superman. I was kind of like I heard it wasn't that great. Yeah. So I just kind of held off, and then the opportunity came to see it. For free, mm -hmm. and I watched it, and it wasn't that great. <laughs> so that's how I'm treating the Justice League movie. Yeah. Like when the opportunity comes along to watch it, I'll watch it and I'll reserve my judgments until right. then. However, based on critical and audience review, I'm not going to go out of my way to see it. Yeah. Which is the only feeling, like the only thing that I want to see is the CGI mustache that I hear. <laughs> Was so ridiculous. The, the removal of yeah, a mustache. The removal, the removal of, of the mustache. Which uh, we were, uh, we saw a preview for something that had um, Henry Cavill, Henry Cavill in it, and he had a mustache. It was yeah, it was for Mission the, Impossible. Yeah, yes. Mission Impossible. Movie. And I was like, I bet that's, that's the, the movie mustache. he had the mustache yep. for that they had to remove. They told him he was not allowed to shave the mustache. They called him back for Justice League for reshoots, mm. and he was in the middle of filming Mission Impossible, yeah. and they're like, you can't shave your mustache. Like mm -hmm. your character has a fucking mustache, dude. You can't shave it. Yeah. Like, well, oh well. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see the beta footage uh -huh. of Henry Cavill in full Superman garb with a mustache. with a burly with ass mustache. Yeah. Like I just want to see that mustache on Henry Cavill when he's going flying around to Superman. I'm like, it's Superman from the twenties. <laughs> I want to know if they. <laughs> Was their first idea was like we'll just take it out and CGI, or did they like try to put makeup on it That's or what something? I was, thinking. Like... I was just like, did they try to green out the mustache? Like just, mm, just paint it a little green. Just like a, a lime green bandage yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's over I'm... your upper lip. <laughs> Does that work, everybody? No. I don't think this is going to work. <laughs> but Mission Impossible, I have always loved those movies, and I will absolutely go and see that movie. I will too. Um, they're going to kill Tom Cruise one day, though. You know that, right? Tom Cruise or Ethan Hunt? Or both? I both. <laughs> <laughs> because he still insists. He's like, I'm 58 years old. I can yeah. definitely keep doing my own I'll stunts. Do stunts. whatever. Yeah. And he breaks bones every time he does those oh, yeah. movies. He's going to end up getting killed on set. And they're like, actor Tom Cruise today. I know, just kidding, Tom. I mean, <laughs> if that happens, he'll at least die doing what he loves. I mean, yeah, you assume. <laughs> well, I hope. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, the the uh, Mission Impossible movies I will always go see. Um, Jack Ryan movies. and yeah, They have and a new Jack TV Ryan show, series coming out with I, John I, Krasinski. I really want to see that. Yeah. Um, he really came into his Jack own. Jack Ryan is like uh, Hunt for Red October and... Um, uh, Shadow yeah. something... Uh, some of all fears. Some of all fears. Um, there was one that came out recently with Chris Pine. Yeah, a few that was years the, ago. that was supposed to be like a prequel to all of them. Mm -hmm. um, Jack Ryan is always played by a different actor for some reason, yeah. though. Like I think somebody played him twice, but I can't remember. It might have been Alec Baldwin. Um, Alec Baldwin in Hunt for the Red October. Yeah. Um, uh, then it was Ben I, Affleck. Ben Affleck with some of all fears. Some of all fears. Chris Harrison Pine. Ford, I think, played him at one point. Yeah, that um, sounds right. And now it's going to be John Krasinski in the yeah. TV show. But there was another one, too. I can't remember what it was. Well, I don't know. Um, but, yeah. Ba basically. Secret Jack, agent. Yeah, Jack Ryan w w worked for the CIA, but he was originally in the Navy. I don't remember. Is this anything? Is this, this Just is think like of, the Bourne identity. That's what I was just going to say. This sounds like the Bourne movies. Except, except there's except always a, a conspiracy involved. Yeah. Except he's not some, some badass guy. Like he never is. He's an he's a CIA analyst mm -hmm. who gets put in these situations where he has to be he has the to guy to save the day, essentially. Guy. And and in pretty much every one, he's like, I'm an analyst. Like, I don't know what I'm doing, you guys. Yeah. 
But it's I I've always really liked those movies and stuff, especially Hunt so for Red October. Just a, he's just a little um, bit more humble. Yeah, because he knows he's a regular guy who happens to be, work for the CIA, and they keep sending him to places where fucked up shit happens, and he's the one who has to deal with it. Yeah, I I, I like spy thrillers. Yeah, spy thrillers are always a good time. Like I think one of the reasons I like spy thrillers, and it, it may seem like an innocuous reason, but like. They always are traveling to European and Asian countries mm. in these spies. Like, there's always a scene in Germany or France <laughs> yeah. or Russia. Right. Or, it's, there's, yeah. yeah, there's always this, like, oh, well, we're going to make our layover in Italy or whatever. Like, they always travel right. in those shows, and it's fun to, to like, see the other cultures interact mm. to these, like, well, let's see if we can have a crazy car chase in Venice. <laughs> like, they, they try and find... <laughs> The most crazy places yeah. to do action sequences, and I guess it's fun to see him tear shit up. Right. It's it's every time. It's always in Europe too. It's not always. Like, it's not like let's go to South America. It's like well, now nah, we're going to Europe. No. Uh, like all right, we have to go to South Africa. They no. also do like a Asian countries as well. Yeah, like, they do Asian countries. Yeah. Hong Kong is a is a mm. nice mainstay yeah. because yeah. you get British guys in Hong Kong as well as Chinese guys. So it's yeah. a good cultural like yeah. stopping point. And occasionally they'll change up and go to Dubai. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was just thinking of like Dubai and stuff yeah. like that. Well, yeah, but they they, uh, they want them to have cityscapes. They want them to have you know old ass architecture, mm -hmm. and they want to and blow shit up, fuck it up. They <laughs> want to fuck it up. Yeah, because they step outside their studio and they look around. They're like, mm, this is not cool enough for yeah. a spy. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> listen, I need to find a street that a car chase using a 1967 Volkswagen Beetle will look cool. Like because it's yeah. always some really old random European. I need it's like, a well, there's no cobblestones right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So my God, I think my favorite spy thriller was uh, the Saint. The Saint. Did you ever see that one? Val Kilmer uh, playing. It was actually based on an old TV show called The Saint, but Val Kilmer plays this guy named Simon Temple, and he is essentially a professional thief that ends up uh, getting caught up in like all this political intrigue and stuff like that. Um, I'm not sure if I've seen. I think that I think one. Elizabeth so Shue was also in it. Kind of. <laughs> I'm not sure if I've seen that one. Um, uh, another uh, one that I've always really liked, Enemy of the State. Mm -hmm. Enemy of the State's always that, been good. Who's in that? Will Smith? Will Smith, Gene Hackman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jack Black, Seth Green. I like Remember Get the Smart. Jackal? Yeah. Bruce that was Willis. Bruce Willis. Bruce Willis is Great soundtrack guy. on that one, too. Yeah. And he, like, mows down Jack Black in a field with that with crazy the, yeah, ass the giant big gun. gun. Yeah. Hold up the piece of paper. It blows his arm off. Yep, blows his entire arm off. Yeah. Fucked up. I feel like I need to see this one, too. Oh, that's a good yeah. one. I think I have the Saint. I don't think I have the Jackal. I need to get that one. It's good stuff. It is. You know, all those, all those good spy thrillers, which you don't see a lot of anymore. No. Except for the, the, the franchises like Mission Impossible and, and the Jack Ryan movies and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like they... For a while, I would say definitely early 2000s, mm -hmm. that formula was just overused. It was just beaten into the ground. Yeah. Mm. That, like, right after the Cold War kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's when it started. Like, the big. 90s and the 2000s is when all that shit was really happening. Mm -hmm. Those really big spy thrillers. Sneakers was a really good one, too. Sneakers. That's a good one. From from the 90s with River Phoenix and Robert Redford. Maybe that's why I'm not Dan as hyped Aykroyd. about uh, the spy movies as these guys are. Like Probably, yeah. I you like, didn't grow up with that. Yeah, I didn't grow up with that. I did, uh, I like, in, the things that I like are actually the stuff, the movies that make fun of that, like uh, Austin Powers and right. Get Smart. Which, the Naked Gun. The Naked Gun. Oh, yeah. yes. Just stuff like that. I love it. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> the movies that you're talking about. Yeah. But Don't see now, <laughs> but if you watch those movies and then you go back and you watch like Get Smart and The Naked Gun, there are so many more references you recognize oh, yeah. that just yeah. like they put you on your ass. You're like, oh shit, I can't believe they just did yeah. that. That's hilarious. I just mm -hmm. found out the other day that Get Smart was Mel Brooks. He produced that. Mm -hmm. I had no idea. It kind of makes sense to me now. Yeah. Like, yeah, the that's definitely Mel Brooks humor yeah, in that. I was like, the comedy style totally makes sense. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, good old Mel Brooks. Yep. Please see that movie. <sighs> I need. I actually have not seen the Get Smart movie. We need to sit down with, with, uh, with Steve Carell Steve and, Carell um, and, Nine, and, uh, and Anne Hathaway. Anne Hathaway's yeah. Agent Nine Nine. Uh, Dwayne um, Rock Johnson. <laughs> yeah, my favorite scene Alan is Arkin. when uh, 
he's on the plane and she says, use your peripherals. And he just widens his eyes. (laughs) 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 I don't know what you're talking about. That just makes me so happy. (laughs) Yeah, that was, that was a good movie. I enjoyed that one. Um, I know there were the, like the two scientists that had Patrick Warburton mm-hmm. as yeah. like an android. And they got their own movie out of it. I think. Yeah, they did. Or like a short movie or something. Yeah, it was a short. But... Um, you yeah. know, I still need to see that movie. I've heard very good things about it. Yeah. Um, I um, Speaking of Patrick Warburton, like I, I found out something recently. It turns out I should have known this for a while. Um, that there is a, a tick show. Mm-hmm. On Hulu or Amazon, I believe. Oh, are you talking about The Tick? Yeah. Yeah. But it's not Patrick Warburton as The Tick. No. It's Peter's uh, Sarah Frenitz. Sarah Frenitz. Sarah Fenowitz. Sarah Fenowitz, yeah. yeah from uh, Guardians uh, of the Galaxy. Mm-hmm. He did the voice of Darth Maul. He was in Shaun of the Dead. Yeah. Um, but he's playing The Tick. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen him do it, but it just seems like almost blasphemous that Patrick Warburton isn't donning the blue I think, cowl. I think Sarah, yeah. Peter Sarah Frimwitz, being his stature, he's not he's not as broad as as Patrick Warburton. Well, I mean, if I, they can CGI a mustache, then I feel like they can do it <laughs> with some muscle. Yeah, it's 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 just Patrick Warburton's delivery is of those jokes, like the really yeah, I know what you mean, like over the top kind of. The, uh, like when I watched those first, I don't know how many episodes of The Tick, which. I still say to this day, came out before its time. Mm. Like, if that show had been released four years later, it would have killed. Yeah. It might have been on the on the air for ten years, but as it was, it only lasted for one season. Which mm. I didn't. I even watched it. Dude, I, it's oh. great. I, did, I remember watching the old cartoon mm-hmm. that came out a long time ago, um, but I never watched the live action. And now they apparently have a new live, live action. action. Yeah, the one with Patrick Warburton, it's it's really funny. Mm. Um, it's obviously campy, yeah. but it's supposed to be. And Patrick Warburton just like kills that's, it. That's the joke. As the tick. Yeah. Um, also, funny funny little fact: the guy who played the mayor um, in the Christopher Nolan Batman movies um, plays the character Batman well in oh. uh, in the original Tick live action show. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. It's interesting stuff. I don't remember who played the mayor. So that doesn't really help. Me. Yeah, I don't remember his name. Yeah. No, she doesn't either. No. Well. Commissioner no. Gordon. Commissioner <laughs> Gordon. Yeah. Didn't I have to explain to you who Gary Oldman was? Oh my God. No, it's. I'm pretty sure like names of anything, names of songs, movies, mm. anything. I will not remember. You need reference. But like, I need to see like the face. I need to yeah. hear the song, and then I'll be like, oh yeah. I've Gary seen Oldman this guy is... before. I know this tune. <laughs> Gary but... Oldman's one of the best actors of all time. He's but he's done so great. much, and you've seen him in so many different faces. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so... he, he he really one of the things that's difficult for people who don't follow him in recognizing Gary Oldman is he has played such a diverse mm-hmm. number of roles, like Zorg in The Fifth Element. Yeah. Doctor Smith and Doctor uh, Smith and Lost, Lost in Space. Space, Commissioner Gordon, yeah. Dracula. Yeah. Yeah. Anytime I see him, like Leon the Specialist. Whenever I see him playing Leon Commissioner Gordon, then I watch a role where he's playing a bad guy. It just like hurts my heart because I'm like, no, Commissioner yeah. Gordon, you're supposed to be a good guy. He plays great bad guys. <laughs> he yes, does. he does. But... Like in in the professional, he was fantastic and yeah. crazy and awful. Yep. Um, that was an that was a mixture of awful and awesome. Yeah, he was awful. He was great in Lost in Space. <laughs> Loved him in Fifth Element. Yeah. Um, Which Dracula is probably one of my favorite roles from him. Have like, we talked about the new Lost in Space show? I don't know if we have. Have you both it's, watched it? Yeah, I, I have. have. Yeah. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> so good. <laughs> yes. And uh, so different. So good. So different. Um, I did have some frustrating issues with it. Mm-hmm. Um. Explain. It's on Netflix, by the way. Go check you, it out. You, you have seen it all, of course. I assume. Um, it th- th- there was there was moments. <laughs> I didn't make her watch that one. Yeah, I didn't. I have not seen it. That's no. why uh, I asked to explain. Okay, well then I I will start from the beginning. I'll make it spoiler free to an extent. It's, um, it's it's Swiss Family Robinson in space. 
more or less. Is, is what the original was based yeah. on. Is it in, is so, it so just in, imagine, imagine like there's some sort of like real shitty situation that you're in, like yeah. life or death survival shitty situation, right? And you're working through it, and you find a solution. Bing, bang, bomb, solved. Got it. But not before some other fuck shit happens. <laughs> yeah. And that's lost Consistently. <laughs> Consistently. Yeah. It's like, oh no, this thing is happening. I've got the solution. Here's what we're going to do. Let's go do it. Oh, fuck. I just let's lost hope, my leg. Yeah. Let's hope that character doesn't die. Now the problem is saving that character. Yeah. And we you, have to you fix this and save them and hope that one doesn't keep us from the other. Solve one problem, two problems prop up. Yeah. Um, it. But it did make for very compelling television. Mm-hmm. There were definitely some heart-wrenching moments. Mm-hmm. Some moments where I was just watching them like, the fuck are you doing? <laughs> the fuck? No, dude, no. Yeah. You're falling into the trap. It's all a part of the plan. And he falls into the trap, and it's yeah. all part of the plan. Oh, man. And uh, but this this one gave us a female Doctor Smith. Yes, who played by Parker Posey. Parker Posey, who did an amazing job. Mm-hmm. Um, who I haven't seen a whole lot from her. Parker Posey. But what I have seen, I've always enjoyed her characters in Blade Trinity and Josie and the Pussycats. Dazed and, and confused. And uh, oh. she was on Louie. Yep. Um, she was in. Um, Red Hot American Summer. I know who we speak of now. Do you? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Parker Posey. But she, I, I know she did a lot of indie films that I did not see. Hmm. And every now and then she, she gets a little on that into the mainstream. Yep. And now she's on uh, Lost in Space. She's doing a great job. Uh, Lost in Space, one of, the, one of the main actors that you never get to see their face that's been in tons of stuff is Doug Jones. Doug Jones, also known as the robot. He's the robot? I'm pretty sure he's the robot. Okay. I could be wrong. Yeah. Don't quote me, but I'm almost sure that he's the robot. Because yeah. you know you know Doug Jones. He's... Doug Jones you've seen before because you've seen uh, the Hellboy movies. He plays Abe Sapien. Yep. The... Oh. He was also in Pan's Labyrinth. He, he was played, in Pan's Labyrinth. He, was in he played the fawn. He also played the googly eye guy. Yeah. I love that. And he was the silver in... surfer in yeah. the Fantastic Four and movies. And in Shape of Water, really he's that guy that too. Movie. Gotta see that movie. Yeah. You know what? I yeah. might be wrong about Doug Jones being in Lost in Space, but I feel like he could be. <laughs> he could do it. He needs to be. Um, I watched something about him recently where he's like, he, you know, starting out, he wanted to be in movies, he wanted to be in TV, he wanted people to see his face, and so many times, you don't. You mm-hmm. just don't see his face because he's always in heavy prosthetics or, or you know, dead, he's in the new Star Trek makeup. show. He's got to be a yeah. fish man. And and twice. but he's just got this. He just got this lanky body and this very very animated face and he has and a very he's very expressive yeah. body language and very expressive and he's perfect for those kinds of roles actually i almost had the chance to meet him he did uh a small production in uh buford georgia with some friends of mine at whitestone productions um it was a it was a short called the candy shop i think hmm. and it was uh it was actually an allegory for um child sex trafficking that uh was supposed to raise a lot of awareness and, and stuff like that because Atlanta is actually one of the largest child sex trafficking cities in the world. I did not know that. I didn't either I did until not they know were that. making that movie. That's a little creepy. Um, but yeah. Ugh. Yeah. We live too close. We but he move. came in. He he met my my niece and nephew and and like hung out with my sister and and because her husband at the time was working on the production and everything. Did so. you hold tight to your niece? No. Because I wasn't there, I didn't. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, did they hold tight to the niece? I'm sure. You? I'm sure they did. Yes. <laughs> I mean, if that's what the the whole thing is about, the production yeah. that they're making is about sex trafficking. I don't yeah. want to bring a child. <laughs> We're just gonna borrow this child for the <laughs> shot. Yeah. Let's borrow him. For you a second. may not see but them. If you haven't checked out, check out uh, the 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 candy shop, um, and I'll get the link on the description. and Everything. Um, I'm sure you can find it on YouTube or something like that. But, um, and you guys should definitely watch it too. It's really good. I will. I mean, it's it's sad, but yeah, sad yeah. but true. Yeah. What I very much enjoy about being on the show is I'm learning a lot of things, <laughs> a lot of names, and a lot of things right. that I've never heard before. <laughs> Me and Dave like to do what we call passive research, mm-hmm. where we just learn things that we want to know and bring them to the show instead <laughs> of learning things specifically for the show. Right. Got it. And it's like, guess what I read? I read this <laughs> thing, guys. Let's share yeah. it. While I was pooping, I was looking at an article. Yep. 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 
You get it. That's really how When I was supposed to be working, I was looking at an article. (laughs) (laughs) Lucky. But uh, we have an asshole of the week? No? I know we had three on the very first time we did asshole of the week, so I don't know if we... I can't think of anybody that really pissed me off this week. Um... So, yeah. I'm sure there's someone. It's just I blocked them out. Yeah. Jackie had her last day at work the other day. And then I had my first day of work today. <laughs> <laughs> From one restaurant to another. So fast. Yeah. <laughs> Making moves, though. Trying to move up in the world. Making money moves. Bought a new car. First car you bought. First car ever. Honda mm-hmm. Civic 2014. Very proud. Yeah. Don't tell them, like, your license plate number. Like okay. That, but... So. <laughs> <laughs> What's your driver's license number? Uh. Four. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Four two two. <laughs> Idiot! You shouldn't have told me that. I'm writing that down. Nine. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah. I noticed you weren't writing anything down, so we probably don't have yeah, hashtags. Like, uh, Not uh, a thing. Yeah. We jumped right into it, and then I uh, got caught up in conversation. I once. very much want at least one of those hashtags to be hashtag fish love, because we mentioned very small amount of. Um, what is it? The Shape of Water? I Just haven't a, seen that. Is any good? I hear it's good. Either. I hear yeah. a lot of people are concerned about bestiality after watching it, but... I here's I, It just looks to me like it's it's a spinoff of Hellboy where Abe Sabian gets, gets laid. But I'd watch it. <laughs> All the scalies were into it. Which that are like, different from like the furries? furries it, yeah, yeah uh, uh, furries are, you know, the ones that are mammals. And scalies are like your sharks, your dragons, your... Lizards. <laughs> Lizards! Yeah, snakes. Ooh, stop. If someone, if them someone off. is a scaly that's a snake, <laughs> do they have to crawl on their bellies? No. no. Usually when it's a, a snake, or like they'll have the top half, and then the, it'll be kind of like a mermaid situation. Hmm. And then the badge is like, okay, wait, what? Let me stop talking about that right now. I'm, I'm yeah, expressing let's too go much. Yeah, in the show. <laughs> we'll talk about this after. Um, <laughs> Woo! If you'd like to support the show, you can go to patreon.com slash talkiebox and uh, give us a little money, get a few prizes, see what you see what happens. Um, well, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, iTunes, uh, other things Instagram. that we're on. Instagram. Um, maybe. You have Google. Figure and it out. Check out the, the links in the description for everything that we mentioned tonight. Including the 8-Bit Bros. Thank you guys for having us on. We'd love to be on the, on that show again. And maybe one day we'll be set up for to have Skype or something on here. And we can have uh, we can have some guests like that. Yeah, wouldn't that be cool? That would be cool. That would be Please cool. Please cool, yeah. guys. Anything else? <laughs> I got nothing. Yeah? What'd you, uh, learn, what'd you learn tonight? I learned that you and I can teach Jackie a whole bunch of things. Not sexual things. That is not at all what I meant. <laughs> it sounds like that's what you were thinking, Dave. I'm, I'm sorry, Jackie. Maybe um, I wasn't. That's starry. Yeah, uh, that's, Dave, you need to check with her before you start throwing all this stuff around all over the place. It just ain't right. No. Oh. And me breaking the bottle. Jackie, what did you learn tonight? Uh, I learned <laughs> about Fallout, mm-hmm. about uh, Pokemon Let, Let It Go. Let's Let go. It. <laughs> Pokemon Let It Go. <laughs> yeah. They're frozen. Instead version. of catching Pokemon, you just <laughs> you're just you're, throwing you're, them. You're, you're stealing people's Pokeballs. Like be free. <laughs> you're not even letting them out of the Pokeballs first. It doesn't matter. <laughs> the Peta version of Pokeball. Pokemon. Oh, uh, Petamon. Petamon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh, Gotta wow. free them all. <laughs> and other yes. things. Uh, you? What did you learn, good friend? Uh, I learned that I need to... Friend of friends. I need to show Jackie a lot more movies and stuff from, from my youth. Yep. Uh, a lot of spy thrillers. And, uh... Show her reindeer games. That's a good one. <laughs> no, that's a lie. That's not a thing. I mean, that is a movie. Yeah. It's got Ben Affleck. What? Yeah, it has um, Ben Affleck, Gary Sinise, I think. You guys are yeah. making things up at this point. Next, you're gonna say, like, show her the bird's nest or something. Oh, you haven't seen bird's nest? What? I <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, I think that's it, right? I think that's it. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.